Good day and welcome back to our next episode, or our last, I should say, in this series of the analytics review pane. We have already covered quite a lot of ground by looking at the different options with analytics pane, and today we will finish off the series by looking at box plots, forecast, and totals. Let's start off with totals. So, if we, for instance, just have a look again at the Superstore data, now you should be familiar with this by now, as we have had a look at it quite a number of times already within this series, is if we start off by looking at something like sales, for instance, over a um, over the categories and subcategories, and if we look at it at a text table, for instance, it's fairly easy for us to add in the totals, and you can add it in other subtotals or as the grand totals, whereby it would then just add another line to your visualization where it gives the total for that specific category or subcategory or di dimension, I should say. And if you're using hierarchy, it would do it obviously per the subtotals. You can also add the grand totals to give you the grand total amount. And this also displays very nicely if you do change the chart type, for instance, to a bar graph and you add in the totals back again add to the grad total you'll see the line appearing over at the bottom there and the subtotal you can do as well just be careful when you do add this it also obviously will make your others um you know fit a bit better or smaller so um we might lose the overall granularity of that if we for instance put category and subcategory into the color tab by holding down the control button you can see we can distinguish it quite nicely in terms of the coloring to show it and properly distinguish it from the actual data so that is our totals option. If we then um, jump on over to the forecast directly. Now forecast is using a statistics model to generate future values based on historical patterns and data. Tableau uses exponential smoothing where recent observations are given relative more weight than other observations. Models capture the seasonality and extrapolates it into the future. Now if we build a simple sales time series analysis and as we said we need a at least one date dimension and one measure so that covers our measure and then our date and if we take that over a couple of months we can easily add in the forecasting onto the graph now as you can see it would obviously give us um, the seasonal patterns because it's obviously analyzing the data from the last couple of years into our visualization but we can also play around with some of the settings by going into the options. For instance, we can determine how long we want this to be forecast for and if we want to do multiple years, that's possible as well. Under source data, we can ignore the last couple of months. So if we say the last one or two months, for instance, if we haven't closed off those periods or those months, then we would rather like to exclude that information or if we do know there's something that specifically happened within those periods that we need to exclude. We can also change the model to you know, not look at the seasonality if we prefer, and we can switch the prediction intervals on and off, or even change how we want the prediction interval to be used and forecast. And it gives you a little summary at the bottom there of what the forecast is actually showing us. Now, you can also have the model described by just right clicking and showing describe the forecast. And what's interesting here as well is is you can see the obviously the values which it has been forecasted, the highs and the lows, but more interestingly enough is the seasonality there. You can see it's 100% seasonal. Um, this is quite nice if you have different dimensions to see, or different values within your dimension, to see which actually have seasonality. And at the end, you also have the quality of the model. In this case, it's okay. It's not the best, it can be higher, but um, this gives you some indication. And the models tab gives you further information if you wanted to unpack and stand a bit better around how this model was derived. If we actually do want these values, because you can see it gives us the sales values, but if we actually want to use them in a table, we can easily duplicate this as a cross tab. And let's just swap the columns around for ease of view. And we will just use the forecast indicator into the color. That would actually just show us a little bit better. Let's just change the estimate into an orange. Now you can see the actual values from the months and automatically where the predicted values start. You can see what the actual predicted value was as, as well as the lower prediction interval for sales and the higher. So these are your ranges then obviously for the confidence bands as well. And that is how we forecast data within Tableau. Now, if we want to look at distributions, and we've already looked at distributions as part of the analytics uh, review tab, but let's look at the last one. 
um, and we will for this we will actually use another data source you can find the data source in the link below in this comment section for now we'll just connect to the excel file and it's called student marks now what this file basically has is we've got the students the class they're in and there's three different classes class a b and c as well as their mark now in our attempt to go and obviously have a look at the distribution of those students or their the student marks we can put class into columns and the mark into rows now this would draw us a bar graph we can change that to a circle and if we want to look at distribution we want to switch off the aggregate measures as well and we can see how these are then distributed by obviously cleaning up the the graph a little bit using class also in the color and we can also just set the opacity so we can get a better grasp at the size a better grasp on the actual distribution so you can see for class a it's a bit more dense than for class b which seems a bit more distributed between 0 and 100 and class c which is sort of evenly distributed but we can improve on this by using the box plot from the analytics tab now box plot over here would automatically just draw the box plot but you're also able to use it in the custom section which would give you more options but for this for, for this one we'll just use it like this and what you can see immediately it is drawing the box plots and if you are familiar with box plots you would know how to interpret this if not let's have a quick look so we've basically got the upper quartile and the lower quartile that defined by these two lines with the two gray um, gray shaded areas and that is basically your interquartile range now 50 it is said that 50 percent of your results would be within that section then the whiskers are drawn at the, at the at these two values over there you would see that these are excluded these two those are considered as outliers um, if you take the interquartile range and what take one and a half time the value of that if it falls outside of that value it is considered as uh, outliers now that could be changed obviously as well and we'll have a look at that in a second for now though what you would see is that the middle over there is the median and your upper and lower quartiles are defined based on that so 25 percent of your values from the median to your lower quartile for instance would be 25 percent of your values and the same with the upper quartile and going from the upper quartile to the top whisker and that is the same for all the classes and what you would notice is that it's not always exactly the same in terms of distribution so you might have that your lower quartile or your your you know, that your lower quartile there is closer to your median which means that there are more values in there so in terms of what can we edit here is well, we can obviously always customize this as I've mentioned we can take away the one times one and a half times the interquartile range and have the whiskers include all of the values as well as we can hide the underlying marks if we wanted to we can also change the style if, if we wanted to as well as some of the coloring so again here you can customize it as you want and that concludes today's video as well as our series on the analytics pain review i hope you had a lot of fun and i hope you got to um, practice a bit with some of these do stay tuned uh, to our youtube channel some more exciting content coming up and let us know in the comment section what you thought of the video and if you have any further suggestions on topics that you might want to see. I thank you again for, for tuning in and see you next time.